Hi everyone, and here I am with another video on macOS Ventura on another unsupported Mac model. Honestly, this was a bit unplanned, and this time this will be about the Mac Pro 4.1 which I have here. In this video, we'll take a look at how we can get the latest macOS version, Ventura, on this lovely machine and how good this is going to work. In case you wouldn't be aware, Apple dropped support for this hardware ages ago already, and the latest officially supported release for this machine was El Capitan, released back in 2015. Despite being unsupported for all that time, until now there has always been a possibility to use patches or workarounds to run newer macOS releases on the hardware and it is still doing really great with that. Now, although there is progress, with Ventura it seems to be one of the larger challenges to get things working. The classic Mac Pro 4.1 is one of my favorite Macs and I keep getting attracted to it somehow as I recently purchased another one. I didn't have time yet to take a better look at it, but this is the top model of the early 2009, also known as the Mac Pro 4.1, so it has two Xeon X5570 CPUs. As the 4.1 is very similar to the 5.1, most of what I will cover in the video also applies to that model. I bought this machine with the ID to flash it to a 5.1 and then to upgrade the CPUs. I even have them already, but there are so many other things to do as well. Nevertheless, since a few days, OpenCore Legacy Patcher 0.6 came out, which now added support for this machine, and I really couldn't wait to give this a try, which resulted in this video. So far, it was difficult for models older than 2012 to run Ventura in general, as a lot of the requirements or dependencies in macOS for this hardware got dropped and need a new workaround or patch. So it took a lot of effort to the open core team to get this working, kudos to them for sure for all their hard work on this. At the moment I created the video, one day after the release of version 0.6, 0.61 was already out and had some additional fixes. As mentioned, these versions add support for older Mac hardware, but there still is a list of things that you need to be careful about. The first one, which is rather easy to overcome, is the lack of USB 1.1 support. This means that those type of USB devices will not work when connected directly to the Mac without patching. So during installation, and in case you would need to reapply patches due to an update, you can only connect a keyboard and mouse through a USB 2 hub. I used this USB 2 hub which I still had laying around and that worked without further issues as you would expect. Once Ventura was installed and patches were applied, as you will see, everything will work again as before. The next major thing, and this has always been a pretty complicated topic on this Mac, is GPU support. Ventura requires AVX2 support in the CPU in order to use GPU acceleration. Unfortunately, none of the CPUs that you can upgrade this machine to supports that extension. Some people are already working on emulating this to overcome the problem, but for the time being, GPU acceleration is very limited to the following graphical chips. A popular card with metal support for the 4.1 and 5.1 is the AMD Radeon RX 500 series, like the 560 or 580, as that's pretty much the best you can get without too much modifications on the machine. For these, a patch already exists, that's very good news, but not for me unfortunately, as I don't have one of these anymore at the moment. So in this case, I will need to count on the non-metal graphics acceleration patches. With that are also some limitations. A 4.1 comes by default with an NVIDIA GT120, and although this is of the NVIDIA Tesla architecture, which is in the list of supported architectures, the GT120 is not included. Another card I had laying around is the ATI Radeon HD 5770, this is the default card for a 5.1. This card is of the AMD Terascale 2 architecture and is luckily patchable for non-metal support. As a bonus, as this is an original Apple card, we'll be able to see the bootloader, which will make things a bit easier. So that's also the card which I installed in the Mac to start with this. Other than that, the machine has 24GB of RAM currently, in 6x4GB, an SSD with Mojave installed, and an empty SSD which I plan to use for Ventura. I booted the Mac into the currently installed macOS Mojave. Although that is indeed also an unsupported release, that's how I bought the machine. So it must mean that the previous owner probably used the DOSDoot1s patch to get this up and running a while back. 
From here, we can check out about this Mac. Here we can see what I already mentioned and we can also see that Radeon HD 5770. System report shows us the exact model and indeed this is an unpatched 4.1. Now to continue with installing Ventura, we need to create a USB drive with the installer and OpenCore installed to it. As I did an extensive video on how to get Ventura installed on unsupported hardware already, which you can find as a card here or in the description, I will try to not spend too much time on this part. Let's first have a look at the drives in this machine. I just inserted a USB drive as well, so we can prepare it while being in disk utility. As you can see, I have those two SSDs installed. A Samsung 840 EVO, which has a current OS, Mojave on it, and the 850 EVO, which is still empty. We can see the USB drive as well, which I will erase as Ventura install in preparation. Next, we need to download the latest version of OpenCore Legacy Patcher. You can find a link for this in the description again. And then we can launch it. Now we can use it to download the latest Ventura version, which was 13.2 at the time of the video. The patcher gives us a warning regarding what I mentioned before, on dropped USB 1.1 support. I guess this would now be a good time to connect and test your USB 2 hub. I did that earlier, so I can click on download anyways. Once downloaded and installed, we can then continue to copy the installation files to the USB drive. That took some time, and eventually we need to install OpenCore on that same USB drive. That drive is now ready, but I prefer to copy the downloaded OpenCore Legacy Patcher app to the USB drive as well. It should be somewhere on the new installed system anyway after installation, but this is easier than to search for it later. Completely ready to install Ventura now. Let's reboot and hold the option key in order to get to the bootloader. The standard bootloader shows us Mojave, Recovery, the Ventura installer and OpenCore. In case you would wonder if you would launch the installer directly from here, it would just fail. So we first need to start OpenCore instead, which is the EFI boot option. In OpenCore, we see a similar screen with both Mojave and the Ventura installer. That's what we want to do, so let's pick that one. First thing that I will do here, as always, is to prepare that empty SSD with disk utility. After clicking show all devices, we can see both SSDs. The 850 EVO is the one which I will erase and format with APFS to be used as destination for the Ventura installation. That's done, we can now close disk utility and launch install macOS Ventura.
All that's left to do now is to accept the license agreement and select the drive which I called Ventura in Disk Utility. Oh yeah, and to wait for a pretty long time as well. From here it took about 45 minutes until the first full boot into Ventura. But here we are, greeted with the macOS setup, let's quickly get ourselves through that. After logging in, we can see our fresh macOS Ventura desktop for the first time on the Mac Pro 4.1. Very nice to see this if you ask me. And even the animation seems to work fine. Good sign already. We also get a notification from OCLP that tells us that we booted from the USB drive and it asks us if we would like to install OpenCore to the SSD instead. That's indeed what we want to do, so let's continue. After OpenCore got built, we can install it to disk. Here we need to pay a bit of attention, mainly because my two SSDs are of the same brand and similar type. The 850 EVO is where I installed Ventura, so that's also where I will install OpenCore. That was the last step we needed. Let's go ahead now and reboot while holding Alt or Option to boot to the freshly installed OpenCore from the SSD. In OpenCore we can select both Mojave and Ventura. Next time that we will start the machine, OpenCore will be what will be selected by default. Let's have a look at what About This Mac has to say now. Interesting to see that there is still a picture of the Mac Pro in Ventura. All specifications seem to match, but I did notice some strange graphical glitches already, possibly due to the patches for non-metal support. To double check if all of these patches, also the one for USB 1.1, have been applied, let me relaunch OpenCore Legacy Patcher, which I copied to that USB drive earlier. After clicking post install root patch, we can see all patches got installed. I must say that macOS does feel pretty smooth despite those glitches. Let me now move the keyboard directly to the Mac and let's also check if we're able to play a 4K video from YouTube. Since I'm able to type, the USB patch is definitely working here. Playing video in 4K seems to work just fine as well. Even full screen or in theater mode, everything works smooth without slowing down. Let's also check connectivity. The Mac I have here has an optional airport card in it which adds Wi-Fi and Bluetooth.
Wi-Fi seems to work as expected. And also Bluetooth seems to be able to find my phone. Perfect. So this needs more time and testing, but so far things look pretty promising. The only thing I noticed were those strange graphical glitches, but I'm not 100% sure about my GPU anymore, as I noticed similar issues in Mojave when rewatching the recorded footage. I will need to double check with the supported macOS release to rule that out. I also read that the upcoming 0.6.2 release has something mentioned about fixing this. I will probably do a follow up on the subject on the Mac Pro and of course I will also document the CPU upgrade process and related upgrades on this fantastic hardware. So make sure to subscribe to not miss all of this and if you have enjoyed this a like would be nice. Also if you have a 4.1 or 5.1 I'd be happy to hear how your experience is in the comments. Thanks a lot for watching and hope to see you back here soon.